So we've seen in the last few videos, if we start with a logistic differential equation, where we have r, which is our, our proportional, or essentially is a constant that says how fast are we growing when we're unconstrained by environmental limits. And then we have k, which we can view as the maximum population given our constraints. We saw that if we wanted to solve this, and we didn't want one of the constant solutions of n of t equals zero or n of t is equal to k, and we did this in the last few videos, we got the solution that n of t, n of t is equal to is equal to our initial n, n not, times our maximum population, all of that over, all of that over, our initial population, our initial population, plus the difference between our maximum population and the initial population. So k minus n not, k minus n not, times e e to the negative r t, e to the negative r r t. That this right over here, this logistic function, this logistic function is a non-constant solution, and it's the interesting one we care about if we're going to model population to the logistic, to the logistic differential equation. So now that we've done all of that work to come up with this, let's actually apply it. That was the whole goal: is to model population growth. And so let's say let's come up with some assumptions. Let's first think about well. Let's say that I have an island. So let's say this is my island. And I start it, and I start settling it with a hundred, a hundred people. So I'm essentially saying n not. Let me do that in the n not color. So I'm saying n not is equal to 100. And let's say this environment, given given what current technology of farming and agriculture and and the availability of water and whatever else, let's say it can only support. Let's say it can only. I don't want to do that in green. Let's say it can only support 1,000 people, max. So you get the idea. So we get k, capital K, is equal to 1,000. That's the limit to the population. And so now we have to think about what is r going to be? So we have to come up with some assumptions. So let's say in a generation, in a generation which is about 20 years, or I'll just assume, in 20 years, yeah, I think it's reasonable that the population grows by Let's say the population grows by 50%. In 20 years, you have 50% growth, 50% increase, increase in the actual population. So what would that? What would you have to have your annual increase in order to for after 20 years to grow by 50%? Well, to think about that, I'll get out my calculator. And one way to think about it, growing by 50%, that means that. You are at 1.5, your original population. And if I take that to the 120th power, so the 120th, well, I'll just do 1 divided by 20th, this essentially says, well, how much am I going to grow by, or what is going to, uh, this, this is telling me that I'm going to grow by a factor of 1.02 every year, 1.02048. And so one way to think about it is every year, if I grow by, if every year, if every year I grow by, if every year I grow by 0.020, I'll just round, 5, then over 20 years, as this compounds, I will have grown by 50, I will have grown by 50%. So that would be our R. This is essentially how much we are going to grow each year. Let me write that. Growth, growth each year. And we're going to assume that our T here is in years. So we're going to assume that our T is in years. So T is in years. So what would our logistic function look like, given all of these assumptions? We would have N of T, let me, n of t is equal to is equal to n not times k. That's going to be a hundred times a thousand. So it's going to be one hundred 
100 times 1,000, my initial population times my maximum population, divided by, divided by my initial population, my initial population plus the difference between my final and initial, so it's 1,000 minus 100, so that's going to be, this right over here is going to be 900. 900 times e to the negative r. So the negative 0 0.0205 times t, times t. So it will be equal to that. And to verify that this actually is, this actually does describe population in a way that we thought the logistic differential e equation would, let's actually plot it. So let me actually pause this video and then plot it. So there you go, I made a plot and I copied and pasted it here. And we see the behavior that we wanted, the behavior that we wanted to see. We see the population right over here. It's at, at year zero is starting at 100. Let me do this in a color that you're more likely to see. Population starts at 100. And we can see that, let's see, after 20 years, our population looks like it's almost grown to 150. So it looks like, at least in the beginning, this, this term, this right over here is dominating. We are growing by this, this 0 0.0205, that would be 2.05% per year, which gets us close to 50% growth. And we see that's what's happening initially. So we go from 100 to 150 in the first 20 years, in the first generation. And then in the next generation, we should add another 75 if we weren't kind of being constrained by the environment. So 150 plus 75 would be 225. And it looks like we got, after 20 years, to about 200. So we're, we're, we're a little bit slower. We're a little bit slower than kind of the pure exponential growth. But we're, you know, the pure exponential growth would probably have us tracking something closer to here but still growing pre pretty well. But then as our population gets larger and larger and larger, as we're getting closer and closer to the maximum population, our rate of growth, our rate of growth is approaching, is approaching zero. So we constantly approach our maximum population, but we never, but we never quite get there. It's really an asymptote. We're just approaching it as time goes on and on and on. But you can kind of set your own threshold if you want to say, okay, when do we get to kind of 90% of maximum population? Well, that looks like that happens. 90% of maximum population happened after 210 years on this island. So on a human scale, that seems like a long time, many generations, but in, I guess in a cosmic scale, it's, a, it's not that long, not even a cosmic scale, even just slightly longer than a, than a human scale. And so it, it'll, it'll happen, well, this, this just describes what's happening. And so this is, this is a pretty interesting model, and it would be, I'd be interested to see how it actually compares with actual data out there for actual population growth. With, with that said, we, it's not this, this, you know, everything that we've done so far has always assumed we're kind of assuming this idea of a Malthusian limit. But what we've learned of, from human history is that this Malthusian limit seems to get, keeps getting pushed higher and higher based on the improvement of technology, that we're able to grow more crops in a certain amount of area. We have better rule of law so people don't kill each other as often. We have um, better control of water and irrigation and, and all of these things so that we're able to increase the limits then far beyond what we thought. I, I would guess if you, told, if you told Thomas Malthus that in the year 2014 we have 7 billion people on the earth, he, he would have said that's far beyond the Malthusian limit. He probably would have guessed that the Malthusian limit was more like a billion or 2 billion given the technology at the time. And we're already at 7 billion. And as technology improves and agriculture improves and rule of law improves and everything improves, uh, we might be able to get, who knows, there might be a time. We might think it's crazy for there to be 20 billion people on the planet, but given today's technology, but if technology approves and optimistic scenarios that maybe maybe we could keep going. Not necessarily, that's a, that's not necessarily a good thing, but we, it just might be what it is.